Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I am your host, Matt Lagore. So today we are going to be talking about business, inspiration, organization, diligence. And I have a guest on my show who I've found to be probably one of the most organized and capable people I have ever met. Uh, she is also the wife of my previous guest, Andy Dokus. So I want to welcome to the show my guest, Jody Dokus. Yay. Welcome to the show. So now, Jody, before we get started, I've known you for a few years now, uh, and I've noticed some things about you. All right. So one thing is you're very organized. Am I right about that? Yeah. Yes. You have a very uh, skill. You're very diligent. You're very focused. You also are very into health and fitness, right? Yes. Yes, very much so. And I don't know why, but I wrote it down here, and it says you're a grandmother. Yes. Really? Yes. You're sure about that, right? I am. hundred percent, right? I'm told. Okay, because you don't <laughs> look like a grandma. Well, thank you. But you're busting that stereotype yes. apart, all right? Yes. This is the new grandmother of the, uh, of right. the, new, of the new millennium, yep, right? Yep, that's right. me. <laughs> and, and, and how old are your grandkids? They are four and one and a half. Wow. Yeah. Boy, that's, that's, that's really nice. Oh, it's amazing. It? It's the love beyond anything you, you thought you ever had for a, an individual. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's one of those things I bet you can't explain to someone until you have the grandkids, right? Just like you can't explain, well, what, what children are great. Exactly. You, know? exactly. you can't really understand that until mm -hmm. you have them. So, okay, so enough with that. Yes. All right. You're also a mother. How many kids do you have? Two. Two kids. Two girls. Right? Two girls. And with, with you and Andy, you have... Six. Six. Six yes. kids, like the Brady Bunch. We are the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard that before, did never, you? No, no, I just no. thought that yeah. up. I made it up it was quick. original. Yeah, it was. I like being original. <laughs> <laughs> so what, kind, what do you do? You have your own business. What is it? Yes. So I own a life insurance company, mm -hmm. and we broker for um, a carrier, and we sell life insurance over the phone. Over the phone. Yep. Okay. We All target right. a market, uh, a niche market, like 50 to 85. Yeah. Um, so we sell more or less final expense coverage for those people to make sure that all of their arrangements are all set and taken care of so it doesn't end up being a burden on their family. Mm -hmm. Now, is that overall, I mean, I, you hear that, oh, expensive, the, the final cost. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that gets overshadowed by the grief of the whole moment, right? Yeah. Is that a burden on a lot of people, the final expense? Is that like a, a, a crippling burden, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean... For the individual that's aging that knows that's coming, it's a huge burden because they know that they don't have ten to fifteen thousand dollars sitting in the bank to pay for it, and they know that it's they're going to be their loved ones who end up, you know, eventually paying for that mm -hmm. price, and they don't want to leave that behind. Mm -hmm. And then for the children of those aging individuals, they know if mom or dad doesn't don't have the funds. It's going to be their responsibility. So they're looking at loans, credit cards, whatever they can get their hands on. Um, social media now, I see GoFundMe pages out to pay for people's funerals. It's scary. Yeah. And the old um, adage of, oh, life insurance is too expensive. It's not. You know, mm -hmm. if you you don't need, you know, a hundred thousand dollar policy to bury someone. You yeah. know. So that's what we do. We we really try to educate them. We try to make sure they understand it is affordable. They can do it. And we can help them, and we have a program that, that they can fit right into. What's the name of your company? United Life Associates. All right, and do you have a website? Um, I do. Um, it's unitedlifeassociates.com. All right, that's good because we're going to put it up on the on okay. the screen too. So, yeah. so just in case somebody's interested in this, absolutely. You know, uh, I think that you know it. You were telling me, you were explaining to me what it does. Mm -hmm. when, when 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 a loved one dies, mm -hmm. that is just so just yeah. troubling, and then to have to be burdened with the yeah. incidentals yeah. that you have to go through. Now this company, they handle that too, don't they? They do, they do. Um, so Senior Life Insurance Company is who we sell for. And they have a program that is like a concierge service to the family. So the family makes one phone call. It's called Legacy Assurance. They make one phone call to the Legacy Assurance team and they go into action. They reach out to the funeral homes. They get the casket, vault, and headstone shipped to the funeral home at wholesale prices. So mm -hmm. what would normally cost a family anywhere from Seven to ten thousand dollars only costs them thirty-five hundred dollars for those mm. three products, oh, wow. and then they negotiate the services. They negotiate the cost the funeral home is charging for all the different services, and they really save a lot, family a lot of money, but a lot of heartache too. I mean, if you've ever had to go through that process, the worst thing is going and picking out the casket. Mm -hmm. You know, and here you are grieving. You just lost 
someone you love dearly, now you're picturing putting them in one of these caskets. And of course, you're going to go for a more expensive one. And that's the most, ex that's the worst experience. Yeah. So they, they take care of all that for them. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. So now let's want to go back to what I said before. One of the things when I first met you uh, and I was working with you and Andy was the level of organization you had. Great. All right. Is that something that comes natural to you? No. I mean, I don't think it comes natural to many people. It's something you learn because how, how do you want to be in life? You know, unorganized, not knowing what's coming next, or do you want to be organized to a point where you know what's coming next, what you need to do next? And if I, I really learned that from my husband, you know, mm -hmm. how to be that organized. I mean, he carries a daily planner around yeah. and he has all of his things he needs to do that day. And, and, you know, it's like he says, if you don't know what you have to do that day, what are you going to do? Where's your path? Mm -hmm. And so he really taught me how to be more organized. I mean, I considered I was my, I considered myself organized before I met him, but I definitely was able to fine tune that. After. You're being very gracious. And it's, is it because he's sitting right no, there? No, no. Because he says the other thing. He says that your organization made him more successful. Oh, okay. So I guess the expression, there's an ex the expression we've all heard it behind every successful man is a great woman, but it works both ways, it right? It does. It does. It's being supportive, you know, I mean, he's supportive of me. I'm supportive of him. And it really works out really great. Yeah. yeah. And you guys work together every day. Every huh? day. All day long. That is, again, that's yeah. impressive too. Yeah. Because there's a lot of couples that... Wouldn't do it. No. 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 Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of couples that probably shouldn't do it either. No. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's so funny. I hear people say, oh, if I had to work with my husband every day, I'd kill him. And I'm like, oh, I don't then why are you with them? Because once you retire, <laughs> when the set, kids are gone, you know, right? Surprise, <laughs> you're going to be with them every day. <laughs> so, you know, that's when I sell them life insurance. No. Oh, really? <laughs> Just kidding. So you look for that opportunity right, and say, hey, hey, look, I've got an, I got an idea. This could work. This could work yeah. well for both of us. So I want to go to another thing. One of the things, I mean, obviously, I was always uh, loved working with you and Andy, your organization. It was like you, you raised everybody's bar. Um, in, in, in your organization, with your organization, right? Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that struck me the most about you was your health and fitness. Yeah. Right? Yes. So what's the term? Like, what would you call what you do? Right. So um, what I started doing was just trying to be healthy. I was always thin, never had a figure or anything. So I started going to a gym and think, you know, trying to put some muscle tone. It's almost six feet tall. Mm -hmm. It's very um, difficult to build, you know, a lot of muscle tone because your muscles are longer, whatever. But anyway, um, I wanted to do something, make my, give myself a, a better figure. So I started going to a gym just to do that and then met a trainer who said, have you ever thought about being a figure competitor? And I, I'm very shy. And I said, no way. And she says, come with me. I, I think you can do it. So we went to a show we watched. I said, I can do that. You know, and I've always wanted to strive to be better. I've always wanted to do something different, better, you know, to, for myself. Not competing against anyone, but for myself to prove that I can do it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, I could do this. So I committed to a trainer and to a date. And that's what really focuses you. You have a date that you know in seven months, you're going to be standing on that stage in a bikini <laughs> in front of hundreds of people and they're going to be judging you on what, you're, what you look like because this is what it is. It's a figure competition. Yeah. Uh, you better have done your best or it's your fault. Mm. It's no one else's fault but yours. That's not stressful. No, Maybe. not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Being judged. Yeah. So you commit. You commit to, you know, an hour and a half to two hours a day, whatever it is, uh -huh. to the gym every day, five days a week. Um, make sure that you get there every day. No excuses. Was there days that I didn't want to go? Yes. Yeah. But I knew on April 17th, when I was standing on that stage, if I didn't do my best, then I knew I would regret not going to the gym that day. Mm hmm so. so, okay, that's excellent. So, and you did this how many times? Four times. Four, oh my God, I didn't know you did it four times. Yeah. I thought you did it twice. No. Four times you yeah. did that. Yeah. Wow. And so, like, now you're right. Like, whenever you're going to enter a competition, I've never entered a competition like that. I have done physical challenges before. Yeah. I did a Tough Mudder competition. And wow. I knew that that date, when that date came, that... I better be ready because right. you have to do it with a team. Yeah. And I know if I'm not in shape, I'm going to let everybody down. Yeah. So you're right. I, I, some nights I would go home, come home from work, yeah. 
And I would, my kids were young, I'd play with my kids and I'd be lying there in my bed and I'd be tired. And it was, I remember one night it was like 8.30 and I was like, I need to go run. Yeah. So I got out of bed and I ran yeah. my five miles I had to do. And I felt so proud of myself mm -hmm. and I felt so good after that. Like the, now I want to ask you a question. When you, what, which was the greatest experience? Was the experience of getting ready for the performance the best part or was the performance the best part? Mm. Um, <laughs> when it was over, it was the best part. But I will tell you when you're on stage and you're doing your routine and you're making, you know, doing the best you can and knowing that you did the best you can was the best, was probably the best part of it because that satisfaction and knowing that you did this and yeah. you're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You looked amazing, by the Thank way. It you. was like, and, and when you, you see pictures of people like in, uh, you know, on TV and yeah. those, they, you know, like, wow, that's amazing. But to be like, I was, I, I knew you when you were in the midst of yeah. getting ready for a competition. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing, like, you, you mean, you look good now, but when you were in your, your training, yeah. you transform, like you, you just look, yeah. you like radiate. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the health, the health of it, mm -hmm. the exercise of it the energy of it, it really transforms you it as does. a person. Yeah, it does. I mean, you, you're eating, you're eating for people to think, oh, that, you know, you're losing weight, you're starving yourself. Oh my gosh, I was eating five, six times a day, mm -hmm. but you're eating clean. Mm -hmm. You're eating chicken, fish, broccoli, quinoa, you know, um, steel cut oats, egg whites, stuff that's good for you. Lots of, obviously lots of protein, but you're still, you know, getting your um, broccoli and stuff like that in your greens. But you're eating clean, you're drinking water, so you're not drinking any alcohol, you're not doing anything, putting anything in your body, no sugar, no um, chocolate, which killed me. <laughs> but um, For how long do you have no chocolate? Okay, so the diet, the strict diet, now you, you eat clean and lots of protein for the whole entire time, but you have a strict pre-show diet for probably about 12 weeks. And that 12 weeks, it's no chocolate, no sugar, no fat, no, you know, even the fish that I ate it had to be specific fish because, you know, the fat, some fish are yeah. more fatty. Yeah. Um, and no alcohol, no nothing. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I couldn't do that. Yes, you can. You can. Mm -hmm. Like anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. It's how bad do you want it? Now, did I want to, um, did I get huge and muscly and manly? No, it's, Without steroids, obviously, it's, it's almost impossible to yeah, get Yeah, it wasn't like that at no. all. No, it was a figure competition, bodybuilding figure competition. And they judge you on uh, muscle tone. You know, obviously, they judge you on your body. You obviously, we had to get really tan. So I, I, I don't tan, as you can tell, my skin is fairly white. <laughs> so I had to get what they call spray tanned and yeah. I actually painted at one point. Um, but there's a lot of preparation. The, the dieting is, the har is harder than the weightlifting part. Mm. Okay, it is a lot of dedication, but knowing that you can do anything. That's where the real cutting comes in. It's yes. the diet, right? Yes. Oh yeah, because you can see somebody that goes to the gym every day and has a lot of muscle, but you won't see the tone once you start dieting and getting rid of all the fat, and it melts off of you. It's amazing. Yeah. It melts off of you. You know what else was amazing? What is that? While you were in that competition, getting incredible shape. You dragged your husband by osmosis with you, and he got into incredible he shape. He did. You know, and I was like impressed. Yeah. You know, because he always wears that suit and everything. You don't realize underneath he had Superman. He's Superman. Body on yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, he he was very supportive. Yeah. I mean, there was obviously he didn't have to adhere to a strict diet like I did, but he did eat what I did, ate. Mm -hmm. um, if he was eating, you know, something that he couldn't, I'd watch <laughs> or I'd smell it. Um, would he? Would now? Um, Obviously, he was being supportive, but yes. he, did he get into it too? Like, did he get into it like, oh, this is, I'm, I'm feeling great. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking great. Yeah. You know, and we're he, looking great. You know? He did. And we actually went to a photo shoot together. Yeah. And because after, you're only like that for a very short period of time because the diet is specific to like almost like a countdown to the day. Mm -hmm. So the day after the show, each show, I had a photo shoot done so I could just capture that moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so he would be with me and he'd do it as well. So we, we've documented it and 
It is amazing you how much control you have over yourself and your brain and your body. Yeah, right, right. Your mind is the most oh, powerful tool you have, right? It's amazing. And you can, can you can tell your body what to do. Absolutely. Matter of fact, that's what uh, Tony Robbins says. He yeah. goes, you know, you can't leave your mind to its own no. uh, devices. Yeah. He goes, it has to be controlled. So would you ever do it again? Yes. Are you going to? Yes. Are you planning on it? When's, when's your next uh, um, competition? Well, it's done. It's by age. Yeah. So um, I've taken a few years off to obviously focus on the business because when you're starting your business, that many hours of the day, you don't have a couple hours to spend at the gym. Mm -hmm. So um, I, if I'm going to do, when I do this again, I'm going to make sure I can commit that time because yeah. if you can't commit the time, don't even, don't even bother setting the date. You have to be able to commit the time and make that commitment to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, when am I going to do it again? Let's see. I'm not going to reveal my age right now, but I'm looking at in two years <laughs> two to years, do it okay. again. Yeah, so right. I'll be back with, with more pictures and <laughs> updates. And so we were, when I was talking to Andy, we were talking about having goals for your yes. life. All right. You always have your business goals yes. and you have your family goals mm -hmm. and you have your personal goals. Now, do, has has being a fitness model, is that what you call it? Or well, it's like a figure competitor. Figure competitor, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. Figure competitor. Has that helped you in other areas of your life? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah because once you prove to yourself that you can do that, I mean, it's be doing what you do to become a figure or even a bodybuilder competitor, however, whoever they are. Once you prove you can do that, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard. Being, controlling your body, and controlling what you put in your mouth, people have a hard time doing that. Yeah. And you know, if if you can control that and say, I'm going to stick to this and I'm going to do it right, you can do. I, I'm telling you, you can do anything. And being a, having that um, goal and knowing that it only works if you have a date. So like we and we talked about the five years with this business. We're going to do five years. Most like you know, three years is probably average people with starting a business. But we have big goals. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of kids. We have grandkids. Mm -hmm. We want yeah. to spend time with them, them. And we know that we're going to have more grandchildren. And we know that we want to go lots more places. And we want to take them to Disney World. And we want to vacation, mm -hmm. you know, in different spots. Those are big goals. And we want to make sure that we can do it with them. Because yeah. that's what we want yeah. out of life. You want to do fun things. They cost money, right? They do. I mean, There's no could, way around it. No way around it. I mean, we could be those grandparents and bring them over and watch TV, and, you know, <laughs> that, which isn't a bad thing if that's what you're doing. But we want to make memories. Yeah. That's what, that's what life's all about is making the most memories. It is. Now, even going out to dinner, if you took all your kids and all your grandkids, <laughs> that could be... That's a vacation. <laughs> yeah, that could be a lot of money yeah. just to go out. And I'm not talking about going to uh, you know, the Capitol Grill. You can just be going to a decent restaurant. Yeah. I mean, even I bet even the old country buffet would still yeah. run you probably about four hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially with the boys. The boys are young, you know, and they eat a lot. But it is. It's. It's. And you know, the there's significant others too. So you know, you have all your kids. There's six yeah. kids, and one, two, three, three of them, four of them have you know, have other significant others. Yes. So it's, you know, it. We want to be able to spend time. Yeah, yeah. And do See, those are things. those are great. Those are great goals that everybody wants mm -hmm. to to have. You know, but it still takes planning. Yes. To do little things, to do vacations, Absolutely. to uh, you know, if you want to have the right size house for everybody to come over and spend Christmas together, yep. right? Yep. You know, you have to have a place where everybody can stay. Absolutely. You know, so you have to do those things. So so awesome. So you're a fitness competitor, right? Yes. Did I say that right? Yes. All right. You're a, a entrepreneur. Yes. And you have your own business, yes. right? Did you did you plan on starting another business? No. How did that happen? Um, Andy and I, we were looking to do something else. Um, uh, you know, we Market America's been wonderful, and we still enjoy that income. Mm -hmm. uh, we we wanted we have a taste, a drive to do something a, else. A new venture, yes. just, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I have insurance background, and uh, I've been. I've done it for, I did it for 13 years before yeah. I met Andy mm -hmm. and we met some people who introduced us to, you know, like the final expense part of it, yeah. knowing that there's how many millions of baby boomers out there and half mm -hmm. of them don't have anything. Mm -hmm. So servicing a need and helping people, I mean, we'd go to someone's home 
and show them that this is this can be done and they'd hug us on the way out and that's the best feeling ever you know being able to help people and knowing that we can be helping people at the same time as making a living really attracted me to this yeah. and so we said let's do it we can do anything and mm -hmm. You can do anything, and you set your mind to it. It's not. It may not be easy. It has it been easy the whole time for us? No, we've learned. I mean, we've learned a lot, a lot. And did we think it would, it would be like this, this, this fast? Uh, we thought so. It's taking a little longer, but you know what? It's going, and it's going to be there, and we're going to work until it gets there. Yeah. And um, that's why we have no reservation and no thought about anything other than success. Mm -hmm. It's never as easy as you think, right? right? It's never as easy as right. you think, but always when you get here and you look back, you're like, well, that wasn't as hard as I thought, right. you know, right? right? And with, with again, with uh, planning yep. and then putting your plan into action, yep. which you guys are very good at and being consistent. Consistency is huge. It's huge. You can't, you know, go in and say, okay, I'm going to do this today and really work hard and do this and then tomorrow I really don't feel like doing it it's, you can't do that every day you have to be consistent you have to go in with a goal you know all right I'm gonna do this every day and if I can if I know that I can work my way up to accomplishing this one thing every day then I'll be successful mm -hmm. and, and then incorporating that in all the people you work with you know this should be your goal every day if you at least strive to it you you might hit it yeah. if you don't hit it at least you got all the way up there and did all of that. Mm -hmm. So we, we teach all of our people and it's a constant feeding of you can do this and let's set your goal and you know this is what we're going to do today. And we have that morning hoorah every morning with our people. And So you do a team building with your team? We do. Yeah. Every morning we do a, a, a nice team meeting and at, by the end of the meeting we put our hands in the middle and we <laughs> one, two, three, team it out. And, and it's good. You know, we, have, we definitely have a great great group of people that you do hard. i've been up to your to your yeah. place i i like how uh was it is it every thursday thursday you make dinner right i do yeah that yep. was nice i we do had, I, I, I stayed we had some dinner there so you make dinner and so you have like a little camaraderie and you all eat yeah. together and kind of we do. Do you, do you talk about business mostly? Is that like a type to, time to get together for a business meeting, or um, is that not like necessarily? A, not yeah. necessarily. We we just talk. It's almost like we call it family dinner every Thursday night. We you know I make dinner for them. We sit in the big conference room. We sit around the table together and we eat. And whether we talk about what we did last weekend or oh my gosh the call I had today or mm -hmm. whatever, it's a time for them to unwind, enjoy each other, build that relationship together, because we're all in the, we all have one goal. Yeah. you know, in the end, to help people. Yeah, so you're building your camaraderie there mm -hmm. with everybody. You know, I, I, one of my daughter's teachers, he's an excellent teacher, and he always has a food of the week. We went in for an a, uh, a open house, and mm -hmm. he was telling us he always has a food of the week. And he goes, the reason I do that, he goes, is because everything happens around food. Yeah. He goes, all your family memories are around food yeah. at some time. Yeah. So that's nice to share a meal together yeah. and you have your conversation. And uh, I bet you those are the things like uh, years from now, people work yeah. with, they will remember that more than they remembered their biggest commission. You're you right. Know? You're right. Yeah. They, it's so, they talk about the meals, you know, because that's something I try to do something different every week. So. Mm -hmm. What's on the docket for tonight? I was thinking chili. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last week we did pulled pork sandwiches with coleslaw. It was oh, really that yummy. sounds good. I wish I was there. I know. Well, we, did, we did cowboy casserole yeah, or cowboy something. Casserole, like that. Yeah, cowboy casserole. Yeah, but the pulled pork sounds oh, good. You're going to have to so let me good. know. I'll have to you know, show up for okay. an impromptu okay. meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, I want to thank you for being thank on the show. You. You've been a great guest. Nice to have you and your husband on. So thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks so much, Matt. Oh, you're welcome. All right, I want to thank you for watching another Matt Lagore Show. Check me out on YouTube, The Matt Lagore Show, and also on Facebook, The Matt Lagore Show. Uh, I have the videos on YouTube. I have a lot of other stuff on Facebook. I find inspirational videos and everything on there. So thanks for watching. See ya!